State Representative John Zlotnick, Mayor Michael Nicholson, family, friends, and guests. Thank you to, for coming today to help us celebrate the dedication of the Pleasant Street Bridge in memory of Corporal Lawrence Lukasavichis, a native of Gardner and a relative of so many of us present today. Obviously, we will not be going to the actual bridge today. We would like to have Jim Kaskowskis, who made this dedication possible and is a nephew of Colonel Corporal Lukasavichis, say a few words to introduce you to him, especially if you are not familiar with his life and his greatest sacrifice. Jim. Thank you very much, Liz and Mayor. State Representative Zlotnick, nice to have you here. Welcome, everybody. It is an honor to be here today. I'm going to make this very quick um, because I get really emotional about this. And uh, Elizabeth asked me to say, why are we here? And we are here because uh, um, a number of reasons, mostly because uh, our family never knew what happened to Larry. And uh, this is sort of a funeral for him. They waited until they all died. Also, we are here, I learned uh, from talking to Mike Walsh who, Walsh, who will be speaking later, who has written extensively about the Rona and is doing a documentary movie about it, is because the Rona was the largest loss of life at sea. A thousand men died at that time in history and has, was a top secret event. All of those families of those thousand people never really knew what happened to their loved one. And so it is the responsibility for all of us who are relatives to remember them. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Can everybody see me? <laughs> Elizabeth and I are nieces, are nieces of uh, Colonel Lucas Avichis and were also born and brought up in Gardner, Mass. Gardner, and, and uh, uh, we have a lot more relatives that were born here too, and who were either living on Conant Street, Eleanor Street, and even as far away as Nutting Street, if you really want to know, it's only about a mile <laughs> away, but that's part of the group, right? Part of the Lucas Savage's enclave, right? However, as far as some of us have, some of us have moved away from this town, we've always considered Gardner to be our home. So, um, Father Steve will now prevent present the invocation. Dear Lord, as we gather here for this celebration, we ask your presence with us. We ask you that you open our minds and hearts in a special way, so that as we recall these events, as we recall these people, as we dedicate memorials and monuments in their honor, that we are brought into contact with your loving presence with us. Be with us this day, Lord, and with days thereafter. Help us always to remain in your peace, the peace in which these men fought to save us. We ask all this in the name of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Steve. Um, Mayor Michael Nicholson, we're extremely pleased to have you here today. It's a little strange talking backwards to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for attending, and we would like to ask you to share a few thoughts with us today. Ms. Mayor. Thank you. Well, hello again. I want to start off by uh, saying a very special thank you to the Kraskowskis family for putting this on. Uh, and if you'll allow me a quick point of personal privilege here, um, the Kraskowskis family has always been a very close family friend to the Nicholsons here in Gardner. Peter and Pat Kraskowskis were in my parents' wedding. And uh, my parents met actually through Peter and Pat uh, in the uh, pro Renew program that was being held at Holy Spirit Church. So I want to say thank you very much to all of you for um, not only what you've done for the city and throughout its history, but also for my family as well. This was somewhat harder to come up with what to say today, but talking to Jim about it, there was a lot of different ideas that came to mind. Back in October of 2019, 
I was serving as the town administrator for the town of Rutland, Massachusetts, and uh, was selected to go down to D.C. to place a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers down in Arlington National Cemetery on behalf of the town there. And then when I came here and started talking to Jim, he was saying how he and his family got to do that same ceremony that you never forget after you've done it, to just remember those who, like Larry, uh, never got to have their full honors given to them. Their families never got that last moment of consolation here, and that's what we're able to do here today. If you think of the inscription on the Tomb of the Unknown Soldiers, here lies an honored glory, a soldier known but to God. That's what Corporal Lucas Avicius was until we were able to gather here today and formally name the Pleasant Street Bridge in his honor and celebrate him together as a community and the city that owes him all we have, just like we do everyone else who we remember here today. And it's also fitting that um, we rededicate the Polish American Veterans Square as well today with this same process where we would normally traditionally begin all of our Memorial Day celebrations over in that area, the intersection of Pleasant Street and Greenwood uh, as well. Now, as a member of the high school marching band for four years while I was there, I uh, kind of just became second nature that we'd go over to uh, the Pleasant Street Bridge, Bridge and PAV Square to start off our Memorial Day celebrations. And uh, I was told by our band director, Mr. Doug Lepiso, to uh, let everyone know that while the marching band couldn't be here today because of the different restrictions with instrument playing that are still in place, they have uploaded a video of them playing all the traditional songs that they would play for us at the Memorial Day Parade to their Facebook site. So you will be able to uh, share that musical aspect of today's event as well. Uh, Representatives Lotnick and myself, as well as many other people here, are part of an organization called the Sons of the American Legion. And it's for those of us who didn't serve, but our family members did. And on the back of our membership cards, there's written the uh, opening lines to the legislation that was passed by Congress to create that uh, group. And it says, the proud possessors, possessors of a priceless heritage. And that's truly what this is, is we're blessed because of the sacrifice of those who came before us. We're blessed because of the lessons that were instilled in us of those who came back to know what it means to honor those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And that's something that I hope we can continue doing, and I hope that as many people drive over the Pleasant Street Bridge and drive through PAV Square, because we know many people have been waiting about six years for this to happen, that those ideas about what those names and what those monuments and why they're there mean to us here in the city. It's the same reason we light City Hall different colors to start that conversation. It's the same reason we put those signs and monuments out to start those conversations as to who those people are, why those things are there, and what stories are behind those markers as well. And if that's what we can do here today, then I think we're pretty well off. So thank you all very much for joining us here today, for getting this started, and I look forward to seeing you all soon as we um, eventually uncover the signs at the bridge itself and then finish our ceremony here. Thank you. Thank you for those very kind words, Mayor Nicholson. Our next guest is a very busy man, but he has found the time to be here with us today. And for that, we are very grateful. State Representative John Zlotnick wrote, and sponsored the bill to dedicate the Pleasant Street Bridge to Corporal Lucas Avages. He has followed through with the bill and has had it passed by the legislature. It is because of the hard work and energy he has put into the signing of this dedication that we are all here today. Thank you so much, Representative Zlotnick, and could we encourage you to say a few words? Dzień dobry. Tu zaszczy the bridge to tight, zapamiętuś od wygazet, polski ma strezny, litewski ma strezny, amerykanski ma strezny. Gawedzie tego samego swodny erpajski jeva. Kazimir Pulaski, the original Polish-American veteran for whom the park down the street is named, 
father of the American cavalry, would die fighting the British on the Georgia coast. Kosciuszko, himself living in exile, became the architect of our victory over the British at Saratoga. They would be followed by many thousands of Polish, Lithuanian, Czech, Slovaks, and other Eastern European immigrants who eagerly answered their adoptive country's call. That service would take them all over the world, from the Polish legion who fought for the Union during the Civil War, to Europe, North Africa, the Middle East, and across the, across the Pacific, and even aboard ships of His Majesty's Navy. In the 1940 census, there were five million Polish Americans. By the end of the war, a million of them would go off to fight. Many of those who returned to this area joined the Polish American veterans of Greater Gardner. Mayor Nicholson alluded to the process we've been through with this bridge. When the State Department of Transportation originally came to the city and told us that it was no longer structurally sound, it would need to be replaced several years ahead of schedule and several years ahead of the funding uh, timeline, then Mayor Hawk and I started to work on this process. Then the Department of Transportation came back to us and said, if you guys can wait a little longer, we can fix the angle of the bridge and the square it connects to, and in the process, rebuild Polish American Veterans Square. Then they came back and they said that there was a gas main under the bridge that would need to be moved first. And if you remember, that's why uh, the street underneath the overpass of Route 2 was uh, dug up uh, last year. It was around that time that I ran into Jim and he was telling me uh, his family's recent discovery of the history of Larry and the Rona. And he asked me then if there was any way we could find a way to commemorate his legacy and his memory in the city of Gardner. And the timing was such that I offered to rename Pleasant Street Bridge in his memory. And I could think of nothing more fitting than the bridge that connects South Gardner to Polish American Veterans Square. As Poles and Lithuanians are forever linked by our heritage, our common culture, in our common ancestry. And it's no wonder why when we came to the new world, we tended to settle in the same places. And I, and I wanna thank you for bringing that to me. I now ask Father Steve to come up and to offer a blessing in the memory of all those who have died in the service of this Republic, especially those of the Polish American veterans of Greater Gardner and Corporal Lucas Avicius. We're going to test out his uh, strength a bit here. Originally, he was going to uh, be there to bless the bridge and the monument, but uh, it's about a, a quarter mile to the south, so. Shoot it over. Yes. <laughs> Father. Gracious God of power and might. It is not your design that humans should make war with one another and so disturb the unity that you willed from the beginning. When in the course of our history, nations have sought to oppress the weak, to harm the helpless, or to expand their influence through violence, we have acknowledged our duty to defend those who are subjugated by injustice and restore a semblance of the peace that you desire for all people. In this effort, Lord God, brave men like Corporal Lawrence Lukasiewicz have entered the fight, whether it be over land, on the sea, or in the air, and have pledged their lives to right the injustices that have led to war. Mighty God, on this Memorial Day, we pray for those individuals who have made that ultimate sacrifice for peace. Especially we pray for Lawrence that the sacrifice he made for peace may be united to the sacrifice of your son which freed all people. In memorial of the sacrifice, we ask you, Lord, to bless the bridge named for Corporal Lucas Avacius, that those who use it may pass safely in the spirit of this man who died 
so that others might be safe. May your blessing, placed upon this bridge, pour out upon all who cross it, so they may be drawn ever closer to you, who is God of love, God of mercy, and God of peace. We also bless the Polish-American Veterans Memorial Square. And we ask that in the memory of all of those who have served as your instruments of peace through the various wars and conflicts of our nation may be memorialized there, and that as your blessing placed upon this square, we'll solemnize that place, that place in honor of those for whom your, the service of peace was a primary concern. We pray this to the glory of your everlasting majesty and to the honor of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Father Steve. Thank you, Representative Lautner, <clears throat> for being with us here today, and especially for making this all happen. Thank you very much. Several years ago, my sister Anne and I were privileged to accompany our cousins Jim Kuskowskis and Bill Hackerton to the Arlington National Cemetery to place a wreath on the tomb of the unknown soldier for Corporal Lucas Avichus. It was an extremely emotional and gratifying day and we were humbled that we had the opportunity to do this. Bill Hackenen, whom I just mentioned, and who is another nephew of Corporal Lucas Savages, was born and brought up in Gardner just down the hill from the bridge. He has agreed to say, on Eleanor Street actually, he has agreed to stay a few words for us and to share his thoughts with all of us. Bill? Thank you, Liz. <clears throat> Veterans of all wars, Representatives Lotnick, Mayor Nicholson, Father Steve, distinguished guests, family, and friends. It is fitting that we meet here on Memorial Day. In 1902, Joseph Lukasiewicz left his homeland of Lithuania and traveled to America in the hold of an ocean-going freighter. He arrived in Reading, Pennsylvania and stayed at the home of a relative. A woman Joseph knew in Lithuania, Anna Adamitis, left Lithuania a short time later and traveled to her relative's house in Amherst, Massachusetts. Anna and Joseph were friends in Lithuania and he soon traveled to Amherst to court her. They were married on August 16, 1903 in Pennsylvania. In 1908, they eventually made their way to Gardner, Massachusetts. They first lived on Emerald Street, then they moved to Limerick Street, and eventually they bought a house on Conan Street, just over the valley from the Pleasant Street Bridge. <coughs> they raised seven children there, Annie, Luke, Rosie, Joe, Larry, Minnie, and Helen. Minnie was my mother. Joseph and Anna then bought a piece of land on Eleanor Street around the corner from Conan Street where they grew potatoes. When my parents got married, my grandparents gave that lot to my folks. Across the way from the Pleasant Street Bridge, you can see the red brick house which my dad and his friends built in the early 1950s. That's where my four brothers and I grew up. Lawrence Lukasiewicz was born in 1917 attended local schools, and worked in various wood shops in Gardner. While growing up in Gardner, Larry was known as a charmer and a fun-loving young man. He played the fiddle in his band, The Lads of Rhythm. My grandmother Anna always told her daughters, my mother and my aunts, to watch over Larry on Saturday nights to make sure he got home safely. Larry and his brother Joe were altar boys at Sacred Heart Church. Larry was known to occasionally sample the wine to make sure it was okay to use during the Mass. <laughs> Larry and his brother Joe both joined the military during World War II. Larry enlisted in the Army Air Corps. In November of 1943, Larry and about 2,200 other soldiers were being transported from Oman, Africa on the troop ship, the HMT Rona. 
Verona was part of a convoy of ships. Uncle Larry had been assigned to serve as a gunner on an airplane flying out of Bombay, India, flying routes over the hump of the Himalaya Mountains. On Thanksgiving Day, 1943, while in the Mediterranean Sea, the HMT Rona was attacked by a new German weapon, a torpedo dropped from an airplane and remotely guided to its target. The Rona never had a chance. It was hit midships and sank quickly. 1,015 passengers were lost. Uncle Larry was one of them. It was the largest wartime at-sea disaster ever for the United States. One of our grandmother's neighbors also had a son in the war, and when the war was over, that son came back to Gardner on the train. Grandma expected that was how her son Larry would return home. She didn't believe the military men when they told her Uncle Larry was lost at sea. For the next few years, our grandmother would walk to the Gardner train station on days the train stopped in Gardner, expecting that her son Larry would step off the train. He never did. In June of 2017, Cousin Jim arranged for the contingent of family members to lay a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Arlington National Cemetery for Uncle Larry. It was truly a moving experience because it was Uncle Larry's funeral. And a couple of years ago, following a successful fundraising effort for Haywood Hospital, a section of the new hospital addition was dedicated to Uncle Larry. In conclusion, I want to tell you one of my mother's favorite sayings, and she actually said this, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> On behalf of all Gardner veterans of all wars, let us now dedicate the Pleasant Street Bridge to Corporal Lawrence L. Lukasavichis, U.S. Army Air Corps, deceased. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. We now would like to have a, a performance by Hannah Farano and Sidney Arnold. They'd like to do God Bless America. Thank you. We invite you to sing along if you know the words. God bless America. just deviate and say thank you for closing the doors. It was really cold in here. <laughs> uh, thank you, ladies. We appreciate that. Our next guest is Mr. Michael Walsh. Um, he is the author of two books on the sinking of the H.M. Rohan. Rohan Memories 1, Eyewitness to Tragedies, and Rohan Memories 2, Eyewitness to Tragedy. He's also currently in the process of developing a new documentary on the story of the deadliest attack on the U U.S. history. Rohan Classified. Welcome, Mr. Walsh, and thank you so much for being with us today. It occurred to me um, we're here to dedicate a bridge, but I started to think about that word dedication, and I realized that there's a lot of dedication in this room and uh, Jim Kraskowskis is one of those people. 
It was through his dedication that the bridge was being dedicated today and other things he's had done. But I wanted to tell you also about an organization that's dedicated to the memory of the men of the Rona. In 2001, I was invited to go to a reunion of the Rona Survivors Memorial Association. It was in Tucson, Arizona, and I really only went for a lark. I went with my stepfather. He was a sailor aboard the USS Pioneer, which was the main rescue ship. The Pioneer was a minesweeper, relatively small ship, and it pulled 600 men out of the water and saved their lives. This was a crew of 100, so you can imagine how crowded that ship was. So being, a, at the time, a relative kid, um, I never really paid that much attention to his stories. And one day he gave me a book written by Carlton Jackson about the Rona. Now, Carlton Jackson was a historian who was a professor at Western Kentucky University, and he had extensively researched the story in the National Archives. He had also found, this is amazing to me still, I got to be his friend, um, but he found the pilot, the German pilot uh, of the bomber that hit the Rona, and he went over to Germany and interviewed him too. So he created a book called Allied Secret, and it was, it's an amazing book, and my stepfather gave me that book to read. And it was after reading that that I realized the sacrifice of all those men. So my background is photography. I was that guy. I photography and video production, and um, whenever I traveled, I'd bring a camera, you know, to take pictures, and I had a consumer video camera with me at the time, still not thinking that much about the actual sacrifice these men made. When I got to the reunion, I started to meet them, and there were quite a few of them around at that time. And um, through my stepfather, I, I brought some of them to my room and I interviewed them on camera, because that's what I do. <laughs> All that was in the back of my head was, these stories need to be preserved. And who better than the people that live them? So after that first year, I started to have an idea in my head that I would create a documentary from, this, from these films. And I went to those reunions. I'm still going to those reunions 20 years later. 10 of those years I served as the president of the organization, not by my choice. <laughs> but anyway, that's another story. Um, and as I grew this group of interviews, it was a lot, starting to become a large body of work, um, first-hand interviews on video, some of them, at, at, starting in 2008, I had a freelancer come with me and we shot them in high def with lighting and all, they were bells and whistles and they're beautiful. So I started to think, this actually before 2008, I started to think, uh, if you know how a documentary is made, um, nobody gets to tell their story. I would interview this person, this person, and this person, and I would take a paragraph and a sentence and a sentence from him and maybe nothing from him, and I'd put them together and I'd tell my version. It wasn't their version. It's a conglomeration. And there's a place for that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I became determined to find a way to let each man tell his story in full, and you can't do that on video. That would, you know, I've, I've got probably 60 hours of video. Nobody's gonna watch 60 hours of video. So I realized that I had transcripts made of their interviews, and I took each man's transcript, basically unedited, and each man became a paragraph in a book. So each man got to tell his story from beginning to end, the way he remembered it, the way he saw it, and the way he felt about it. Some men laughed it off, some men could still cry, I can too. 
And it became very emotional, and I became determined to make these books, and it turned into two books, and they're both relatively identical. Each paragraph is a man's story. It's just that I accumulated more stories than one book. So once that was done, I, I equated this last night. We went to dinner, and I never thought about it, but probably everyone in here has had a COVID shot. And after you got your COVID shot, how did you feel? It was like, ah, the, like the weight was taken off. That's how I felt after I did the books. I, I felt I had achieved what I wanted. Their stories were down. People could read them. They were preserved. So now it was time to start working on the documentary. And I worked for, <laughs> I worked for years. I was full, worked full time. I also did uh, video and photography on the side. And I'm squeezing in this documentary. And it's moving at a snail's pace. And I like to tell people, if you watch a movie or you watch a documentary, you wait to the end, and they start rolling the credits. It's not one guy. And that, that's what was happening. It was one guy. And I'd never made a documentary. I'd only worked in the corporate world making training videos and that kind of thing. So I knew how to create the raw footage, but how to pull it all together into a documentary was a mystery. So about three years ago, at one of our reunions, a man showed up, Jack Ballow. His wife's great uncle had died aboard the Rona. And he had found out because he discovered letters up in their attic. They were living in the house that he lived, that her uncle had lived in. And he started to read these letters, and he, he was blown away by the story that was unfolding. And he started to do research on the Rona. And if you Google it, I show up because of the books. And he saw that we had a reunion. He came to the reunion and we met and we were, we've been collaborating ever since. COVID's thrown a little monkey wrench in the, in the works, but we've been uh, Zoom meeting. And you can, you can literally edit, you can see the other, the other person's screen. He's in New Jersey, I'm in uh, Rhode Island. So, even though COVID slowed us down, it didn't stop us. We still have interviews to do and that kind of thing. But I feel so great that this is moving forward. We're about, I would say, halfway done. Still another year and a half or so to go. But it makes me feel great that these, these men won't be forgotten. The story needs to get out there. It's an amazing story and there's a thousand men died, there's a thousand stories, and some of them are heartbreaking. So I just wanted to let you know that we're not going to let the story die with these men. The organization, I, I, I'm so thrilled. I said I served as uh, president. Well, that meant nothing to me, honestly. I'd never looked for that. But what I did look for is a succession. So an organization can't live if the, the organization was born by the survivors. It's right in the name. They had dedicated themselves to create a memorial. And there is one in Seal, Alabama at Fort Mitchell. Relatively small for a thousand men dying, but it, it's, it's nice to have. And we've been there a couple of times. So I just want you to know that the succession is going on. The first presidents and the board members were all World War II era gentlemen. Most of them I interviewed. And then the uh, president before me was the son of a World War II uh, survivor. And that was good. That, you know, that meant the, the organization was moving along and it would survive. And so about, it must be two or three years ago now, I said, okay, 10 years is enough. <laughs> we need to choose in the board, I mean, in the board too, we need to choose a successor. And we chose Jason Markowitz, who is a grandson of one of the survivors. And also on the board is another grandson. So it's, the organization is alive and it's moving along. And we always had survivors at the reunions and it was awesome to see them, it just, oh. But the past reunion, well, last reunion was um, canceled because of COVID. The one before it, there were no survivors that came. It's not that there's no survivors, there was actually a survivor 
that lives in Beverly, Mass. He just retired last year, 94 years old. Um, and it just comforts me to know that it, the organization is moving on and these men will not be forgotten. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh, for uh, sharing that with us and helping us to keep the memory of our, our, our uncle alive. Um, when we were talking a little bit about heroes, uh, one of the things we wanted to share with you is the heroes in our family that have served our country and continue to serve our country. So as I read my list, I ask that you remember the heroes in your family too. Just take the time and think, thank those who have passed and those who still serve today. Okay, spec five, Lawrence Lucas. Spec 5, Edward Liptrap. Captain, Anthony P. Kraskowskis, Jr. Sergeant, National Guard, Peter Kraskowskis. Sergeant, National Guard, Jim Kraskowskis. Colonel, George Giacopi, Sr. Colonel, Dr. George Giacopi, Jr. Lieutenant Colonel, Julia Giacopi Hatton. Spec 3, Kenneth Graves. Captain, Dr. Gordon Lunwall. Private First Class, Walford Osterberg. Corporal William Hackenen, Sr. Seaman Construction Mate John Hackenen. Corporal Lawrence Lukasavichus. Corporal Joseph Lukasavichus. Motor Machinist Mate First Class Pete Kraskowskis. Gunnery Sergeant Joe Adamitis. First Lieutenant Joseph Grigalowskis. Private First Class Anthony Grigalowskis. Our national anthem will now be performed by. Cindy Arnold and Hannah Farino. Thank you, ladies. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs burst bridge right now, we would be unveiling the signs for the Corporal Lieutenant, Corporal Lucas Avages Bridge. Um, that would be done by Senator State Representative John Zlotnick and Lawrence Osterberg, <coughs> also a nephew and namesake of Captain Corporal Lucas Avages and Mayor Nicholson and Larry Lucas. We would like to conclude our dedication with the poppy ceremony <clears throat> Excuse me. Conducted by Larry Lucas, who is his nephew, and also his namesake. Larry is a Vietnam veteran and recipient of the Bronze Star. He will also be assisted by Bill Wisnowskis, one of the Knights of Lithuania. And continuing with that, we will have the rifle salute, taps, and the benediction by Father Steve.
Merciful God, we have gathered here in your presence to remember those members of the Polish American and Lithuanian American communities who have served us so valiantly in our armed forces. We especially remember on this Memorial Day those who gave their lives from these communities in the defense of freedom, especially for Corporal Lawrence Lukasiewicz. Send your blessing down upon this community here assembled, Lord, and bring them the blessings of your peace, the peace that we hope lasts for years to come. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you all for spending your time with us today to honor and celebrate our nation's hero, Corporal Lawrence Lukasiewicz. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Since the, uh, since the rain is holding, we did make arrangements to go and uh, unveil the, uh, the name placards at the bridge. Uh, so anyone who would like to join us, we will be headed there uh, promptly to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.